Hi there, my name is Chris and I'm an application engineer for Man and Machine UK, specialising in AutoCAD products. Today in this video I'm going to show you how to create a bill of materials using block attributes and blocks. Okay, so in order to create a bill of materials using block attributes we need to create a block first with an attribute. So you can see this is a block here and we have an attribute part number and we have another block this one's the PC block, that one was the chair, this one's the table, and they all have this attribute part number with a field part number in it. Okay, it's important to have the attribute name or tag the same in each of these blocks so that they add up into the same columns when we do a bill of material. Okay, so we have desk, we have chair we have PC and we have that's it so far <laughs> so we need to add another one or oh, in fact let's edit these ones here let's create these and make them a block so we have some doors here and I want to give them a part number At the moment they're just lines they're just pieces of geometry if I select all these lines I can then type block. This will turn this into a block. So I can select the door as the name for the block. And I can specify a base point, maybe the bottom corner. Once I'm happy with this, we can select open in block editor and go OK. So we jumped into the block editor because I selected that option. Now I need to add an attribute to this block. So I simply go to the Insert tab, select to find attributes, select to find attributes, and then place in the attribute part number as the tag, mm -hmm. and then part number as the prompt. And then we can give it a default, maybe D001. I typically like to keep my uh, attributes organized and aligned correctly, even if they are going to be invisible, which I've got the invisible option selected on here. And then I place it on my, my block. So I might place it sort of around about there. Text is a little bit small um, that's because of my style but it doesn't really matter because it's an invisible attribute okay so once we've created that attribute I will then click select close and save okay so there's my block but you'll see there's not an attribute in there yet all right so what I need to do is do something called at sync. This updates all the attributes within all the blocks. Or selecting a block will update the attributes within that specific block. You go OK. Once I now click on this block, you'll see that I have the attribute there. Okay. So let's just copy this door and paste it into the other holes. So I'll select door, select MI for mirror, and mirror it round. Select door, copy it, and paste it, and rotate it round. and copy that and paste that down here so we now have four doors with the part number D0001 I could if I wanted to select two of those doors and change it to D0002 Okay, so we've got two doors with 0002, 
and two doors with zero zero one. So what I'm going to do now to create the table and to count up all my parts and and uh, create a bit of materials of all of them, I'm going to do something called a data extraction. The data extraction can be done from here, extract data, or you can type data extraction. I'm going to create a brand new data extraction. Select next. I'm going to pick one of these and rename it to give it a brand new data extraction. OK, and then click, set, uh, click Next. And then I'm going to select the options I want. So I want to display blocks with attributes only. I'm going to select uh, display blocks only. Actually, I'm going to go back because I want to specify a particular area of the drawing. So I'm specifying a particular area of the drawing with this button here and this option set here. Now we can see that we just have these blocks here. So I'm going to select them all and then click next. And then I'm going to say just show me the attributes from these blocks. And we only have the one part number. I'm going to change the uh, display name to part number and then select next. Okay. Now we have a list of all the parts and their part numbers in each column. So I select next again and I'm going to extract this to an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to save it here, call it class AM XLS and then finish that. So what we have now if we open the right folder, we have an Excel spreadsheet which is our bill of materials. Okay, so what if we want to place this as a table on our drawing? We can do that also. <clears throat> so once we've extracted that data to an Excel sheet, we need to link that Excel sheet to our drawing so that we can place a bit of material table on the drawing itself. So to link the uh, Excel sheet to the drawing, we can use this button here, the data link. So we click on link data, we click on create a new data link, we can give it a name. Oh, actually it's important to do this within the paper space, not the model space. So I'm just going to switch it to the paper space and start again. So link data, create a new data link and select BOM. Okay, that's going to be the name of my data link. Now I need to find the Excel spreadsheet. And here we can see a preview of our table. The count, the attribute names, and the part numbers. Okay, we can give this a relative or a full or no path whichever we prefer. So we can select OK and we can see another preview here and then select OK again. So now we can create a table and use that data link to create our table. So we select the table icon on the annotate tab and instead of start from empty table we're going to select from a data link. We're going to select the drop down list and then select our data link bomb and we can see a preview of our bit of materials. Okay, once we're happy with that, we can select OK and place it on the drawing like so. So you can see that using blocks and attributes, we can create a quite useful bit of materials which can be extracted to an Excel spreadsheet or placed on the drawing. I hope you found this uh, video useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Manor Machine UK. Have a nice day. Bye.